Well, all righty. Um, if y'all will, uh, let's uh, just go, Lord, in prayer, and we'll just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, pray, uh, pray out into our, our classes. Please join with me. Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for yet again another blessed day that you've uh, uh, covered us with your grace and mercy. Lord, the, uh, the strength and the very breath that we've had for this day, Lord, has uh, come from uh, grace and mercy of you. Father, I just thank you for this uh, time that we have to gather together. Lord, and just pray that you uh, that you would anoint us. Lord, and that your Holy Spirit, Father, would uh, be at work in us, Father, to help us to understand the truth of your word. Uh, Father, I just pray that it helps us to, to grow in our understanding and knowledge of you. Lord, that it would help us to grow in love, faith, and trust in you. Just thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be in uh, Matthew chapter 7, and looking at uh, verses 8, verses 8 through 11. And this is, uh, this is just kind of picking up where we left off last week, and um, while Sherry's getting those uh, printed off, I'm not sure if you may have the copies that was handed out last week or not, but uh, last week that's uh, what we... Um, uh, today we're going to pick up on where we started last week um, when I asked the question, what does it mean to ask, to seek, and to knock? Uh, we talked about uh, prayer, and um, whenever we enter those times in our lives, whenever we are needing uh, and searching for something from God, whether uh, it be in prayer for a specific need that we have, that uh, the prayer that we may have on behalf of someone else um, may just be, you know, questioning what God's doing in your life. So, um, yes. <laughs> you wouldn't have one extra, would you? Uh, I do. Yeah, let me take this. That's all right. I, I go Actually, I tell you what, I, th I think it'd be. I can look on. I think I'd do it off my tablet. I can I get it off it. my phone. Yeah, I think it's just big on my tablet. Oh, okay. So, thank you. So, that's where we're going to pick back up and uh, just have a real quick recap about the, the first part of it. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about is there, is there something specific in our life that we may need to, to God to do on our behalf? Um, some kind of question or request that uh, we may have uh, for God. You know, is there something specific that, that we need? Uh, maybe wondering what he's doing in, in our lives. Uh, maybe seeking direction for our lives. Seeking direction for a specific thing that may be happening in our lives. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why we would, um, you know, be uh, seeking answers uh, from God. And one of the best ways that we can uh, find answers is to simply ask him, the question that we're seeking the, the answer to, right? And I'd mentioned before, it's it's okay to ask God questions, but we get into trouble when we actually start questioning God and what He may be doing. Right. So picking back up on that, to ask, seek, and knock, let's just read those uh, verses. And uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 8, uh, I think through 11, uh, we'll just go Lord in prayer and ask Him to continue to help us to better understand these scriptures. And uh, we'll dive into it a little bit more. Well, Matthew uh, chapter 7, verse 8, it says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It goes on in verse 9, say, Or what man is there of you whom is of his son ask bread, will give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, he will give him a serpent. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Um, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, uh, again, I thank you for this opportunity we have together to, together and to break open um, the truth of your word today. Lord, and uh, I just pray, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts and our souls and our spirits. Lord, <clears throat> line us up, Father, that we may receive fully uh, and, may, and receive everything that you have uh, planned for us. Lord, we know that your word does not go out for it. It's going to accomplish what it, uh, it, what you set it out to, to do. 
Father, Lord, I just pray that it accomplishes a great deal in our lives, Father. Uh, to help us to grow in wisdom and understanding, Father. Help us to better operate in our prayer lives, Lord, when we come to you seeking answers for whatever it is that we may be asking uh, in our lives and, and in the lives of others, Father, as we intervene in, in their lives also. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, last week, just a quick recap, you know, I, I kind of made the assertion that God is faithful in answering prayers. We kind of made that reference that we being uh, sinful people, uh, we being uh, wicked people, uh, we still know how to be good to our children. Mm -hmm. And God, who is, in, who is perfect in love, how much greater is he able to? To, to give that which his children ask of him. And I also made mention of how God can even, well, oftentimes answer our prayers to a greater degree than what we anticipated. Uh, we may not see it right away because we don't see all and know all like uh, our Heavenly Father does. But a lot of times, I know at least in his experience in my life, uh, when I pray about a specific thing, that God may answer it, and I may see that he answered it in a different way, and a lot of times I see how it worked out for my good, how God chose to answer my prayer instead of um, sticking to what my specific prayer uh, was. And uh, we may mention that uh, it's common for a lot of Christians to, to know about prayer and, and, and the how to go through the process of prayer, and they do studies on prayer, and do uh, Bob, um, do uh, classes on prayer, and, and all these other things. But when it boils down to it, a lot of people just don't fully understand, or just don't believe in the true power of prayer. Um, and um, again, you know, as Pastor says many times, and we've said in church many times, prayer changes things. It really, really, and truly does. And we talked about uh, uh, asking God. Uh, I mentioned James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. It says, You lust and have not, and you kill and desire to have and, and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it on your lusts. So ultimately, is a lot of people don't have it, don't have what they're wanting, because they don't ask God. Many times they don't ask God because they know they're not going to get what they want from Him because they know in their hearts that what they're wanting is selfish and self-centered and it's for their own personal gain. It's, it's for their benefit. It's not for the benefit of others and it's not for the benefit of God. And I believe that every prayer that God answers, He's going to answer uh, in a manner that He gets glory for, which I wouldn't want anything less. You know, that's why a lot of my prayers is, um, God, um, you know, if it be your will, you know, whatever, whatever my request may be. And I always ask God, you know, to, to work this that he might receive the glory and honor out of whatever it is that I'm requesting out of him. So we, we kind of focused last week on the importance of our prayers that we ask him and that we're coming to him in the right manner. That we're not coming in a selfish, self-centered way, um, seeking something for only ourselves, and that we're uh, looking for our request to line up with God's will and it to be in a manner that God might receive the glory. If it does those things, then you're on the right track to getting an answer to your prayers. Uh, mention John 16, 24. Here too have you asked nothing in my name, asking you shall receive that your joy may be full. And he tells us there, ask that you shall and you shall receive. He makes that promise there. Uh, it may be in a different manner, but he will answer. So we got the asking part down last week. Today I want to move on to, uh, I guess what I would say is step two, and that is seeking God's answer. 
So when we're seeking God's answer, it means that we're looking for ways that God may answer our prayer. And that's one of the interesting things in it. And this is where a lot of people, if you don't believe in the power of prayer, you miss this part of it. And if you don't believe in the power of prayer, then you will likely miss God answering your prayer. Uh, because a lot of times, he's not going to answer your prayer exactly the way you asked it. And if you're not looking for God answering that prayer, you may miss it all together. And so when we ask something, uh, when Hannah, when she comes to me and she asks for an m and uh, she said, Daddy, can I have two m and And then after that she goes, she just sits there and looks at me. And I did it one day and I said, well, and I just paused there for a long minute because I was actually waiting for Jessica to come back in the room so I could say, can't she? Can't. I was trying to get Mama's approval first because that's all it takes is two m and &Ms. It's like two little nitro tablets to just <laughs> set her off like a bottle rocket. So, um, but anyways, and that on top of the caffeine in the chocolate in her heart, so we have to kind of be careful with that. But anyways, uh, so she had asked for those two m and &Ms, and then I was paused there for a minute, and she just stood there just looking at me like, okay, I asked, you know, where's it at? And she stood there, patiently, surprisingly, but she looked at me, and she didn't move. She just stood there in front of me, and what was she doing? She was... She was seeking. She was, ex yeah, she was expecting that request to be fulfilled. If she didn't believe that I was going to give them to her, she probably wouldn't have waited around that long, or she probably would have went ahead and went to Mommy anyways and asked, <laughs> asked her instead. How is it that all children know to do that? Go ask one. If that don't work, go ask the other, right? They do that. And ask when they're not together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a... <laughs> like I said, I decided to wait for mom to come in there because she had waited for that opportune moment to, to come and ask. Uh, but seeking God's answer means that we're looking for ways that God may answer our prayer. Uh, it is that we need to have an attitude of expectation and even a mindset of anticipation that God is going to answer our prayer because he says and he promises that he will. When we do that, we become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's promptings to how God may be actually answering that prayer. And I, this is related but not. One thing that I've done before that I really saw a big difference in, and it's hard to do this these days because there's so many distractions out there, but take you one day, um, be, spend some time in the Word and some time in prayer and try to take one day to wholly concentrate, put your blinders on and wholly concentrate on what you see God doing in and around your life. I mean, make that your top priority for the whole day. And as many chores and, and things and, and as busy as life is these days, and I know it makes it hard to, to do that every single day, but I did that for one for one day for sure. And I said, God, every single thing that I do, see, hear, smell, I am going to try my best to see you operating in my life and around me. And I was truly amazed at all the little things that I saw happening around me that I could see hints of God working in. Uh, just one thing that I remember right offhand is uh, going to work that morning. There was a, uh, a car that a squirrel had run out in front of the road on. And when the squirrel ran out in front of the road, the car swerved a little bit and actually ran into the, the ditch on the little side. Well, I, I was a little ways off, so I you know, wasn't close there to why I was actually involved in it, but I was close enough to to see what happened. I saw a little squirrel coming across, and they kind of swerved off that way. Well, when it come about that time, that car had slowed down. And when that car had slowed down, there was another car that went right through 
a, a four-way stop. I mean, just like you see the back end jump up a little bit where they go across the road a little bit. And it was right in front of that car. And if, if it would have been anybody else, like, man, that guy sure was lucky. But no, it, I wholeheartedly believe that that was God working in that circumstance to prevent that very serious accident from happening. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm, I, I couldn't have calculated it perfectly, but I saw the guy hit the brakes. I saw the back end come up a little bit, so I know he slowed down considerably. And then when he let off those brakes and got going just a little piece, right in front of him, it went. And so, you know, just little things like that. Um, but I say that to say this, uh, the, the same principle operates in our prayer life, that when we ask God for something, if we're act actively looking around us at how God may be answering that prayer, we'll be more in tune to see, uh, we'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's promptings and what God may be doing in our life to answer that which we're seeking the, the Lord for. So. I wanted to encourage you to stay alert with your, I noted it here, spiritual antenna, spirit fully extended, ready to pick up and receive on how God may be answering um, those prayers, uh, uh, how he may be answering them in your life. Because if you believe God will answer your prayers, will you not be looking for that answer? Will we not be looking for it? And that's part of seeking God's answer is actually to be seeking Him. And that's one of the things that I like about this is whenever it says, uh, um, going back up there at the, the very first verse, it says, and he that seeketh, find it. Well, he that seeketh, what? When it says, he that seeketh, find it. So it says, for everyone that asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, find it. So you would think seeking what you're asking for, right? But he goes a little bit further than that. Uh, one of the interesting things that I had found is looking at that word seek. Do you know, I'm still doing some more looking into this to make sure, but every time that I found seek in the Old Testament, every, every time the word seek was mentioned, it was all about seeking God. It wasn't about seeking an answered prayer or, or, or anything else. It was always about seeking God. Uh, and I believe that fits perfectly into these verses related to asking according to God's will. Uh, it's uh, a couple of verses that I wanted to share with you uh, that um, relate to this. is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29. It says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Now I love how 2 Chronicles 24 is parallel to that. It says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Adding to that Psalms 105.4, Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face evermore. Jeremiah 29, 13 also it says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So in other words, when you really want to find, when you really have a desire to, to find God and to seek God, that's when you will find him. When you make a wholehearted commitment to seeking after God, you will find him. So, in giving those scriptures, a couple of questions that I noted down here was, as you're seeking your answer, are you seeking God as well? Because he's the one that has the answer for you. And uh, I just added a little, another side question there. In what ways may you be currently seeking God in your own life? So step two is seeking. If we truly believe in the power of prayer and we believe that if we ask God that he will give us, uh, that we shall receive 
uh, an answer for that which we're asking him, then we will be seeking that answer. And the best way to seek that answer is to actually be seeking him uh, also. And the third step I have noted here is to knock. And that's what we see in the last part of the verse, uh, verse 8 there. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Him that knocketh, it shall be opened. I ask this question, when is the last time you knocked on someone's door? The job that I do, I'm um, in customer service, so I'm going to customers' homes and knocking on the doors all the time. And when I go up to their door and I go, what's the next thing I do? <laughs> I stand there and I wait patiently, expect, you know, to see if somebody's going to open that door. I don't know for sure or not if they're going to open that door, but if I call and talk to them, I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll open the door. But if I wasn't able to get a hold of them and I go up to that door and I knock on it, I wait there to see if that door is going to open. I don't know if they're home. I don't know if they're going to open it. I don't know if, um, you know, if it's not going to open. I just have to give it some time to wait and see. Uh, but when you knock, you usually wait for that person to answer, right? Uh, if you've knocked on God's door, are you waiting for that answer? And it, it's kind of like this to me. is I've heard many people say, and I've said it myself, if God opens a door, I'll walk through it. Um, in my house, I don't open my door for anyone that I don't know is at my door. I've had that happen before. My mom had come up and she didn't know, or actually not my mom, it was uh, Jessica's father. He come up to the house and um, he called and talked to her and he knew that we were home and I guess it was missing communication or something that he thought that we knew that he was coming over but we didn't know that and he never knocked on the door. Uh, he came over to help Jessica with uh, some tomato plants and some other, put some fertilizer and setting dust and to uh, um, sucker the tomatoes and, and all of that good stuff for her. And uh, so he came over and did all that and he said, well, I was at the house for like 30 minutes and y'all never came to the door or came outside or anything. And we're like, well, we didn't know that you were here. You never knocked on the door. And... Sometimes we kind of treat God like that. We want God to open the door, but we never, not first to say, you know, hey, I'm here. And that's kind of how it is with uh, um, our prayer requests uh, uh, to him. Um, as the Holy Spirit makes you aware of possibilities, let's be faithful to pursue them until we had checked them out. And that's often what I'm trying to say here in this part is when you ask God for something and you're looking for that answer to come, um, He may not always answer it the way that you want, but sometimes you have to test those waters out to see. That's like with us. Um, we'd ask God to help us to sell our home so that we could move closer to the church. And we did the whole God open the door and we'll walk through it thing. Um, but we didn't, we never knocked. We just, uh, uh, instead of going and, and visiting with God knocking on that door, we just sat at home and just waited for Him to open the door for us. And this is when we were trying to learn the whole process of, of how to operate in God's will and, uh, you know, how to, we had the hard intentions to, to do the right thing. Um, we believed that we were asking God for something that was in His will. Um, it wasn't selfish, you know. It wasn't, you know, for our gain. It wouldn't have benefit for us. Um, well, it would have been a benefit because uh, we'd be closer to the church. But it was a, more of a benefit so that we could, at the time when we were, uh, 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 she was working with the children, I was working with the youth. We could be here and be around more uh, for them at that time. And so. 
you know, we'd, we'd ask God to, to, it was His will, um, to make it to where, you know, we can move closer. And we tried to put the house up for sale with somebody, and everything that we tried, it's, it just never would work. Yeah. And uh, what happened was, is it was like uh, asking for a couple of cookies in a locked cookie jar, and instead of asking Daddy to open the jar and give us a couple of cookies, we're going to take a, a hairpin and try to pick the lock ourselves. And it didn't work that way. And what we should have done is, is what I was mentioning here, ask the guy and been looking for an answer of uh, been looking for ways that he may be answering for that to come true. But instead of us looking for his answer, <laughs> we were trying to answer our own question to God and do it our way. Uh, we we tried to sell the house, um, which wasn't his will, and we tried several several different things to, to make it happen. But the problem with that whole thing is we, we tried. And then actually to the point to where we gave up and said that, well, maybe it's not his will. And, and then that's when we quit, quit trying to answer our own question to God, that's when he answered it for us. And the way that he answered that, I think I had mentioned that uh, to you guys before, is that um, uh, uh, Jessica's work, she had lost her job. I had changed jobs. Our income had, had dropped dramatically as a result of all that. Um, and so trying to do the responsible thing, we were going to get a loan modification for our home uh, through Chase Bank. Uh, well, it was during the time that, you know, we had this whole housing market crash. And it was right. All of that came at all of that at the same time. And it's like triple whammy of everything. But we were trying to do the responsible thing and do the modification. Well, it just so happens that um, we got locked into like a little modification scam that was going on. And we actually lost our home in a modification scam from the bank. And anybody else would have been upset at that. You know, wanted to try to file a suit all this other stuff, which there was a sort of lawsuit, that, uh, a class action suit that we didn't volunteer to get in, but just because we were a part of the circumstance, it automatically pulled us into it. And so I really appreciated that $5 check that I got for all my trouble. <laughs> Isn't it funny how those civil suits go? Usually it's about $2 check. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just glad it was doubled. So, but anyways, um, but nonetheless, we weren't upset. And that was the thing about it is, is because we had such an expectation that God was going to answer that prayer that when this happened, we didn't see it as somebody taking advantage of us because we had enough faith in God knowing that no person could take advantage of us. No person can do us harm that God wouldn't allow. So if this happened to us, it had to be because God allowed it to happen. When God allowed that to happen, I'm telling you, there was one thing after another, after another, after another that fell into place. Uh, that home, you know, we thought, at first we thought it was the end of the world because, you know, you lose your home, uh, uh, bankruptcy is going to destroy your credit, uh, the bank's going to come after you, they're going to short sell your home and come after you with all, with the, the extra money and all this other stuff. Do you know that the same bank that foreclosed on our home bought our house back at the courthouse for almost $10,000 more than what we owed on the house. So they actually owed us $10,000 for our house that they foreclosed us on. But you know how them wonderful lawyers work. It's funny how it has come out to exactly $10,000 in lawyer fees for the closing costs and all that. <laughs> how did, how, this just, I think, uh, I think you got to be half attorney, half lawyer to work that out so smoothly. But anyways, uh, so it, it, long story short, it came out that we owed absolutely nothing on home. We got out from it scot-free. And, and when they told us the last day that we had to move out, we were packing up our stuff not knowing where we were going to take it. We didn't know where we were going to go. 
trying to figure out how we could get that in storage and stay with Jessica's mom for a while or whatever we were going to do. And that day, a house became available in Atwood, which was 15 minutes away from the church. And we were an hour away from the church that very same day. It was a week after that, Jessica got that job in Paris, which was about 40 minutes away from where our new place was going to be. Where we moved to put us from 60 minutes away from the church to 10 to 15 minutes away from the church. And where God placed us with that place that he made available the very day that we had to leave our old home, it is, and I timed it, because I went to visit Jessica one time, I just had to know, I timed it to leave our driveway from that new home to get to the parking lot of my work was uh, 40 minutes. To get to the driveway of my home to the parking lot of Jessica's work in Paris was 40 minutes. So he put us close to the church and smack dab in the middle of where both of our jobs were going to be. And that's just a little piece of what all happened during that whole time. And so... I'm says that God will give us desires of our heart. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes be careful what you desire. <laughs> you got a few of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, we, we would have never had seen that if we, um, you know, if we wasn't looking for God answering that prayer. Uh, we would have been, we would have been so wrapped up and sold over what the bank did to us instead of seeing what God did for us. And so there's where the big difference there. But sometimes you have to look for God opening those doors. You may go around knocking on them and waiting to, to see if they open. And we need to, to ask the Holy Spirit to help make us aware of those possibilities of how God may be answering those prayers in our lives. And my brother-in-law was a good example of that. He, uh, uh, I had, I was living with him in Clarksville, and um, while I was going to, to school at Austin P there, and my brother-in-law had a calling on his life to become a minister. And so uh, they had good jobs there in Clarksville. Uh, just had a, had my niece uh, Lauren. Uh, so uh, they had nice, comfortable home jobs. Uh, was just our family and everything else and he felt this calling to go into the ministry but he wasn't for sure you know he just kind of had that conviction and that feeling stirring up inside us so he just started making that process he just started taking little baby steps to, 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 to try to go that direction and every time it seemed like he would hit a roadblock it seems like this may not be God's will, something would work out just right uh, that would just give him reassurance that that was what God's will was. And ultimately, that's, you know, they moved from Clarksville to uh, just uh, south of Memphis and he went to the uh, Baptist Seminary School down there in Memphis and, and became a minister. Uh, but uh, as he felt that conviction, he asked God, is this what you want all my life? And he saw after that, and as he was seeking and looking, he had his spiritual antennas up. And whenever he thought he saw something that God may be walking, working in his life, he took little baby steps to, to pursue that and to see if that was indeed God's will. And every time he got close to having a question on whether it was or not, God would work something in that circumstance uh, and and you know and make it to work out to where it was kind of reassuring him that that, that was um, the, the God's direction for his life and uh, I, I remember really um, respecting uh, that's really where I saw one of the, the first times I really saw Walking in faith is from my brother, and, uh, my brother-in-law, and my, my sister when I lived with them. Uh, you know, taking that leap of faith to, to follow God and whatever His direction was. You know, it was hard for him to give up what he was doing, um, 
but it was hard for my sister also, you know, because, you know, she had to trust him, trusting God, to make all of that happen. So I saw her faith as well as his faith as they, as they walked that path uh, to seek. Um, <clears throat> again, knock on the door of possibility and wait to see if God will open it wide or it will stay closed. And that's one thing that will happen a lot of times is that, um, like what I mentioned, I go to the door and I knock on it. It may open. It may not. I don't know until I have some patience to wait and see what's going to happen. If I see the door opening a little bit, then I'll know that, you know, it may be an opportunity for me to go in and help fix the problem they've got. If it never opens, then I'll know, you know, it's not the time to, to help them. That's how it may be in our life when we're asking God for a specific thing, um, to, to wait patiently and see if a door of opportunity opens for that prayer to be answered, and if it is, to, to examine that possibility, uh, and, but if nothing shows up, that just may not be the time, which have to continue seeking and knocking. But God's answers will present themselves to us if we're seeking and pursuing those possible um, opportunities of God working those answers in our life. So in saying that, a uh, couple of questions on uh, this part is um, to consider for a moment the ways that um, you are currently knocking on doors. Uh, is there a sense that God is telling you to wait or should you be knocking on another door on whatever it is that you might be seeking uh, God for in your life now? So uh, have together here is a little example of how the ask, seek, uh, and knock uh, might play out in our lives. And it's this. Uh, say you knock on the door of a possibility, then wait to see if it opens wide or stays securely closed. Though you don't know when it'll arrive, the answer to your prayer will be right on schedule according to God's timetable. So let's say that we're uh, in need of a job, you know, with the COVID that's going on, you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs and are seeking other jobs. So if you go job hunting without praying and asking God first for his direction and blessing, you'll be at mercy of the world system. Because God says, ask that it shall be given to you, right? If we don't ask him, then we're at the mercy of the world. But if we ask God for a job, but don't bother to seek out possibilities, then we're not doing our part uh, in it. So instead we need to pray until we have faith to believe God is going to grant that request. Uh, and that's when we step out in faith and seek options, trusting God to guide our steps. So it's kind of like this. Uh, some people don't bother asking God for a job, but they go out and try to do it themselves and they fail at it. Um, some people ask God for a job, but they sit on the couch waiting for somebody to knock on their door to come get it to them. <laughs> And they don't have one. But the, according to what we see here about the asking, seeking, knocking, if we ask God for a job and we get out and we look for ways that God may answer that by going to apply for jobs at some companies or going to an unemployment agency, you know, we do our part to, to look at those. And then when we get those phone calls about jobs, then, you know, those are potential opportunities that we may have for jobs and we pursue those and we look into them and see and, and ask God for guidance and direction as we look into those different jobs that may present themselves available to us. And when we become aware of a possibility, knock and check it out. And as we walk by faith, continue to thank God for that his answer is on the way because he does answer our prayers. And although we don't know when it will arrive, the answer to our prayer will be right on schedule according to God's timetable. And so that's the thing, and that's the other part that will happen. Some people will ask God for it, they'll go out and apply for one job, not get it, and then go home and give up. That's not somebody who truly believes that God will answer their prayers. You know, so again, we don't know when the answer to his prayer may arrive, but... It'll be right on schedule according to his table. 
because his timing is much better than our timing. So we must believe that God will answer. And I want to share with you 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. It says, Jesus said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth, hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. I've got a comment to mind. Our granddaughter come to our house. She used to not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we hadn't seen our great grandson in two weeks, and he was throwing a fit, wanting to see Granny and Papa. Yeah. But she come by, and she was sitting at the supper table, and she says, "I have applied for a setup job." And a higher she's, position. A higher position. Mm -hmm. And she says, "I want y'all to pray for me." Okay. So we pray. Mm -hmm. So she called. And she got it. Yes. And she was killed with it. Oh, uh, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, so that's a great example that, you know. Don't always come that quick. No. <laughs> it no. Don't. She said she went in at 1 o'clock for her interview, and at 1.30 they called her back in and said she had the job. She starts it July the mm -hmm. 20th. She likes where she's working. Right. She works here, and the daycare is right here. Mm -hmm. So it works out well for her. So it works out real well. And now, since she's getting the increase in pay, she can afford to move closer to the job. Right. Because right now, she's having to live in Rutherford, but she wants to live in Trenton. I see. So, but she had to go where her rent was cheaper. Right. And so now, she says, I can move back to Trenton. So now her homework and yeah. everything will be right. And she wants her son mm -hmm. in Trenton school. And he's supposed to, well... I don't know if he's going to get in or not at pre-K because they don't live in yeah. the school district. So he may not. Get so school. the way that that operated, did it make her feel pretty confident that it was that prayer yeah. God had answered? Yeah, she said she yeah. went all the way back out on the floor just praising God. Mm -hmm. We'll say, and he's getting the glory for it. And, you know, and they asked her why didn't she apply for it last year. Mm -hmm. And she said she didn't feel comfortable or confident enough in her ability and in herself yeah. to apply for that job. But now that she's been there almost two years she, and she'll be a set up in the department that she has worked in mm -hmm. ever since she's been there. Yeah. She knows the ins and the outs and right. everything and she said she applied for it. And, and even that very part of her having that, that confidence in yeah. herself that, that is the very thing that came from God also. Yeah. It built up the confidence but, in her uh, to take that step. She and, always and, comes to us, pray mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. pray for this. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> as far as we know, she's never accepted Jesus as her personal Savior. Right. But she knows everything she's got comes from God. Mm -hmm. And she praises God for it, yeah. even though she's a lost sinner. Right. Well, those are just steps that just help build on her testimony that one day you know, God may open and reveal everything to her. So show her that his love and, is, we, and grace and mercy is still extended to her. He bought blind one of those in her Bible. Mm -hmm. And she reads to him every night in it. Every night they go to bed. She likes it. She likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was at my house She's two weeks up. ago and he said uh, he was outside playing on his swing set and he said uh, he loves Spider-Man. He says, you know who my hero is? And I said, Spider-Man. He says, nope. I said, well, who is your hero? And he says, Jesus. And I said, you couldn't have a better <laughs> hero right. in the world, That's boy. Right. That's right. He loves to come to church. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that gospel message is, is getting interwoven into there. So just pray in God's time. And that, you know, that and that when we go to bed at night, we have to say our prayers. Mm -hmm. And then when Danny offers the thanks over the food, mm -hmm. if he's hungry, he'll say, now, Papa, you got to say the short one this time. <laughs> <laughs> and they do the children's prayer the over children's the food. Because <laughs> Papa gets long-winded. Yeah. Well, we're getting a double dose of the thinking of the food because um, now, because we always, we let Hannah pray over our food, but we always get together and we pray at night. Yeah. You know, thanking him for the day and his grace and mercy through the day and another day of good health, especially for her and 
just ask him to watch over us tonight and get a good night's sleep and all of this. And, and, but now she's insistent that she says the prayer at night. So we have to let her say, Jesus, thank you for this food we're eating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's become our bedtime prayer. But she's adding to it now. She's gotten into the, you know, give us the, watch over us and give us a good night's sleep. But we're still getting that thank you for the food. In there. <laughs> um, but uh, where was I? Yeah, so if we know that God hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we will have petitions that we desire of him. We know that God will answer our prayers. We just can't get a, a stuck on how and when he's going to answer those prayers. For that, we need to be open to God working his perfect will in our prayer requests. In order to do that, we've got to have our spiritual antennas up and looking for how God may be answering that prayer and examining those opportunities that he may be given for whatever it is that we're asking for him. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, that will help us to better see and understand how God is operating in our lives or the lives of others. Whatever it is that we're praying for, or whoever it is that we're praying for, we'll see him at work in a manner that uh, would bring him honor and glory, okay. which I believe is what we would all ultimately uh, want in here. Uh, just like what um, you were talking about, and that prayer request meant to answer quickly. I mean, it, it's clearly that God got the glory for that, and, you know, that's part of his will, because it's just showing yet again that he is real, and he is working in uh, her life, that uh, she still has favor with him despite her being sin, a uh, sinner. So, you know, those, those things still work. We just have to have our spiritual antennas up to, to be able to, to see that. So, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much confidence do you currently have that God hears you and will answer your prayer? Uh, I hope we're on the 10 side there. Uh, if not, then um, we should pray that God would, would give us greater confidence. And that's one thing I'm thankful in my life is that as I see him answering the small prayers in my life, it gives me faith to trust him in the, the greater things uh, and the greater prayers in my life. And the last question I have here is, is there something in your life that you specifically want God to show you? If there is, then take the time to not, not just ask, but to ask, seek, and knock. Whenever he does answer, be sure to thank God when he does answer. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the ask, seek, knock steps of prayer, I guess I would say. Um, first, we have to believe in the power of prayer. And when we do that, that will encourage us um, to take those extra steps necessary to really see God answering those prayers in our and in the, the lives of others. So I pray that this is a benefit for not only you, but maybe for others when you see others that says, I prayed for God and, and this didn't happen. You're like, well, maybe it's not time yet. Or, you know, we can ask them and say, well, how have you sought God's answer to your prayer? Are you just waiting for him to throw it in your lap or you uh, got your looking glasses on looking around to see he might be answering that prayer. Because he will. And he does answer prayer, but he's going to answer it according to his will and in a manner that God receives the honor and the glory. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got anything else you want to add before we close out tonight? Yeah. Uh, what I brought up while we go about God, he answers prayers and he answers on a, his timetable. Not ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know when we first moved out there where we live and I bought an acre and a half land. And right beside it was about another acre and a half that was farmland. And I always wanted it. And I don't know as I actually ever prayed for it, but I wanted that land. And it just looked like it went with my place. So the man that owned it, I'd see him every now and then and I'd say, wouldn't want to cut that off that farmer and sell that piece of land for me, would you? 
No, I can't do that. I'll say the whole farm. No, I don't need the whole farm. I just want to. This went on for 10 years. Well, along came a man that had a whole lot of money and bought the whole farm. And stopped out my house one day. And he came out there and said, are you interested in that land? I said, been trying to buy it for 10 years. And he just started walking. I started following him. He walked out in the middle of it and looked at it. Well, looks like it ought to be worth about $1,500. I said, it's all. And he was on the board of directors at our bank. Yeah. <laughs> just, no trouble getting no just He said, well, you won't have no trouble getting no financing on it. <laughs> that's how I come by it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and for us, you know, it's just, um, I was talking about how we got moved to Atwood, but the, how we ended up moving from Atwood to, to where we are now, it, um, as many of y'all may recall, the home that we were staying in, um, he, he never would repair the roof, and the uh, water damage to it caused the roof to fall in, to where it was like, you know, busted open. It was uh, a major hazard. At any time, um, not so much concerned about myself, but especially uh, Jessica or Hannah, they could have been walking in the kitchen and those support beams just completely break loose. They were already broken. And at any time they could have completely gave way and the, literally the whole roof would have just come in on the, on the floor that's there. And so we badly needed to, we stayed for a week or two uh, at Joanne's house just to not be in the home because uh, it'd be impossible to keep Hannah, as much as she runs around everywhere, uh, out away from that area. And so we desperately needed another place to go. And, you know, we rented the whole ordeal as far as, um, you know, paying rent for a home that we couldn't stay in. And we couldn't stay in the home, so we weren't paying rent. We weren't paying rent. You know, he wanted us to get all our stuff out, which I understand that. So, again, we needed a place to go. And we looked and we looked and we looked trying to find home that was within a budget that we could afford to look for. And we looked, we looked at the, the Zillow, ZillowRealtor.com, you know, all these different places, searching, searching, searching. We had a lot of friends and family sending us pictures of different ones and the ones we thought we'd go to, there's, you know, it just never would work out to try to find a home. And it was the same thing again. You know, we'd gotten a notice, um, you know, that we needed to be out by this certain date. And, you know, it, it was a pretty stressful time because all of that was happening. It was right about the time we were having to go for Hannah's surgery. So, you know, we had this whole, um, we were going to leave to go to Texas and come, ba come back to, to, to be homeless. No, no place to call home. And, and, you know, just the point where it looked like nothing was going to work out, uh, this home popped up on the market. And we know we've looked at before, but we'd always said, you know, we can't afford that. That's out of our budget. So we never would pursue after it. And we couldn't figure out what was different now than what it was three or four weeks ago. And then when we went and looked at the home and all of that, and, you know, we could just sense that, you know, that this is God opening up an opportunity. It was um, everything that we wanted uh, and, and needed. And it was within the budget we could afford. And then we found out at the closing time that the home had dropped forty thousand dollars a couple of weeks before. And it was it had been up on the market for a while, I think, and it just um, they had already moved out of state for uh, I think the husband had a job somewhere else, and uh, it had been on the market just for whatever reason. The price they were asking for was a good price. Um, but I think there's still some work that had to be done to it. So um, <clears throat> in the matter of that two weeks, they had somebody to come in, do a whole bunch of repainting and remodeling and, and getting it fixed up to where it was in a sellable shape. And at the same time, they dropped uh, the $40,000 off of it. And so it was like those last two weeks, God, I believe, uh, according to my spiritual antennas, God orchestrated all of that make that happen to where that home was sellable and at a price that we could afford to where it would work out for that. Amen. Like he made it unsellable until it was to the point to where, you know, it we were in a position that we could work on, that we could make an offer on that. 
it gave us a little bit extra time to, to, to come up with a little bit extra money that we needed for that down payment on the front. And even on that part, I can't remember exactly what happened, but we ended up only having to pay half of the, oh, that's what it was. And, and part of the deal that we made with them is um, part of the offering price that we gave them is that they paid the down payment for us, which was the thing as far as having to come up with that big down payment on the front part of it. So we paid them the asking price instead of negotiating them down, but instead of getting them to come down on the whole offer price, they actually offered to us to pay that down payment, which is where we were hung up on. Mm -hmm. So God had already worked that deal out before we'd even got there. And that was just another sign that we knew that, that God was operating in that time. Isn't he great? He is. He absolutely he is. is. And any other person, they might have been proud of themselves that they, you know, of what had happened. We were looking at a little house over here on 104, but the doors were shut on it. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to be do, go through that too because, let's say, if you want something and it really is not God's will, but you prayed for it long enough and he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm just to show you that it wasn't his will. We've seen that happen <laughs> yeah. more than once. once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he you, you have yeah. to learn over time to really trust God. Mm -hmm. You get to that point where you, you, you go from asking to demanding. Kind of like Hannah with them well. two M&Ms. You know? <laughs> yeah. She'll ask for them really a couple of times nicely, and then after like that, really she... <laughs> I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay. When doors start closing, you know it wasn't God's will. That's right. When it is, it's a little nothing. Yeah. But if we have eyes to see it. Mm -hmm. And that's where that seeking comes in, looking for possibilities where he may or may not be answering that prayer. Yeah. You won't know until you pursue him. Anybody else got anything? All right. Well, uh, let's go, Lord, in prayer and just... Uh, before, you, before you pray. Yeah. Our, our timetable is not God's timetable. Yeah. Right. Let's go, Lord, in prayer and just uh, thank you today. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord, and just thank you for uh, the reminders in your truth, Father, Lord, how, uh, Lord, we are to uh, ask uh, according to, to your will, Father, Lord, that you might receive the glory. But as we do so, Father, Lord, as uh, faithful sons and daughters who believe in your promises, Father, we know with all confidence, Father, that you can and you do answer prayers because you are a good father who gives good gifts and answers the prayers of your children father out of that confidence um, in your promises father lord i pray that that would encourage us father to seek after the answers uh, to the prayers that we um that we <clears throat> pray to you father as we do so lord i just pray that you would help us to see uh, how you might be answering those prayers, Father, Lord, that we would have the boldness and the courage, Father, to pursue the possibilities of those answers to your prayers. Father, that, um, to, to know when you may be opening doors, Father, but Lord, also know when doors may remain closed. And most importantly, Father, Lord, that you would help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to be patient, to wait upon you as you answer those prayers. Lord, I ask that you would uh, give us eyes to see, Lord, and to understand, Father, how you may be operating those prayers in our life, Father. Lord, that we might give you the honor and the glory and the praise in you operating in our prayers. Father, we just continue to lift up Pastor you, thanking you for the good report that we had this afternoon. Uh, Lord, that the surgery went 
well and that he's recovering and that uh, it sounds like he's feeling pretty good. We give you the honor and glory for that, Father. Lord, we continue to ask uh, your hand of protection upon uh, him and Pam and the, and the whole family. Lord, continue to give him um, uh, just peace, um, comfort him. Lord, uh, just uh, strengthen him uh, both physically and spiritually, Father. Lord, and just continue to help him to see the testimony that you're writing in his life, Father. Lord, she worked in those circumstances. Father, we ask for a speedy recovery, Lord, that he might uh, come back. Lord, we know, Lord, uh, what you have uh, impressed in his heart, Father. Lord, and the, the passion that he has, Father. <coughs> Lord, to come out of that hospital recovered and uh, and just uh, continue uh, running that race and fighting that good fight of faith for you, Father. Making known the, the mysteries and the truth of your word. Father, I just pray that it, that it would be so according to your will. I just ask that you would go with us as we leave this place. Continue to, to go with us and go before us. Lead God and direct us and protect us, Father. Lord, until we can meet again, we just thank you in the name of your Son.